give it up for a great, great stand-up comic, Ms. Heather Hurst. Let's hear it for her, folks. Good evening, y'all. Keep it going. Here we are. I was worried I was going to have to clean off the window after that French joke there. It's all good. I always wondered what it was like to be a topping at Subway. Apparently, I'm living the dream. <laughs> Oh, it's so good to get out and start living our lives again, isn't that right? Yes! You're at a comedy club, it's amazing. It's just, it's been such an adjustment, you know, it's like when we first were able to start start stepping out, it was a little bit nervous, it's like, what are we getting into? But now we're all like, oh yeah, masks up, let's have a beer, it's great. I am so happy to be performing again though. It's excellent, it's great. But everybody has a different risk level that they're willing to accept. A friend of mine, she didn't. She lives in Orleans, she didn't want to come visit me because she was afraid to get on the bus. So I said, don't worry about it, I'll come to you. And she said, aren't you worried? And I said, you know me. I used to go to bathrooms and gay clubs in the 90s. <laughs> For a lot of reasons. I think I can do a transfer at Herdman. I'll be fine. <laughs> I said, are you kidding? I've been to Burning Man. If you don't know what, yeah. If you don't know what Burning Man is, it is a social experiment where 80,000 people move into the Nevada desert in the middle of August to answer the question, how long can people survive only on a diet of beef jerky, vodka, and ecstasy? And, and, and the answer is nine days. Um, that's because we ran out of vodka. Uh, but that means I used porta potties with 80,000 people for nine days. So if I can survive that level five biocontainment hazard, I'm gonna make it through this global pandemic. That's what I've decided. Yeah, yes. That being said, I am taking all the precautions. I got vaccinated. I find it fascinating that healthcare workers are protesting getting vaccinated. It's sort of like if we had soldiers and we were sending them to war and they said, no, don't give us any guns, somebody might get hurt. And that's what it seems like to me. Yeah, that's crazy. I also, I, you know, I use a mask. I'm still trying to get used to it, but I always, you know, I use them because they're protecting us from COVID. They really are. And they're also, in a couple of months, they will protect us from those horrible mustaches of Movember. And, yeah, and already they're protecting us from resting bitch face, right? Yes, yes. I Also, if you have resting bitch face, you're not trying hard enough. I think, I think I'm into active bitch face. That's what I like. I like to know what I'm dealing with. Oh my gosh. But yeah, it's, uh, I'm just, what I'd like to know is like, we're getting used to masks. They're starting to become normal. So when are they going to get weird? Right? Like when are the Quebecois going to start putting eyelashes on them? Like they do on the lights and headlights of their cars. That's what I'm wondering. I think it'll get interesting. I think it'll be good. Uh, when people, when they started lifting restrictions, you know, a lot of people couldn't wait to see their friends or get a haircut. Not me, I had different priorities because I've been living alone for 18 months. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, job one, I got a massage. That's right, because I hold all my tension in my glutes and I paid some poor unsuspecting woman to massage my ass for 45 minutes. <laughs> She was having her own Me Too mo a moment and she didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Job two, I booked a Brazilian wax. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a big job. No, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> no, no, I mean, that was the longest my lady garden had gone untended. And, uh, and fun fact, after you've been clear cutting the forest for a number of years, it didn't come back uh, cute and curly like it used to be. No, it was straight and wiry. Yeah, it'll take an eye out. Yeah, yeah, and I can't afford to buy goggles for my lovers, so, you know, I'm waxing to save lives now. Yeah, all of my waxes are sponsored by the Canadian National Institute for the Blind. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, 
Also, I've been living alone, so uh, like a lot of people, I bought a dog. I got a dog. I bought a little Chihuahua mix. Uh, super, oh, so cute. Like, you don't understand. Like, he's, I know everyone says their dog is cute, but mine is gorgeous. Like, people stop stop on the street in their cars and roll down the window and tell me how cute my dog is, you know, like, and it's been hard because, like, I consider myself a seven, you know, like, a solid Ottawa seven, you know, yeah, thank you, a Cornwall nine, you know. <laughs> But this dog is a freaking 10, like it's crazy. I used to think that guys would talk to my dog because they wanted an excuse to talk to me. No, they really want to talk to my dog. Fuck, do you think they're trying to fuck my dog? <laughs> Shit, I just realized that, it's crazy. But he's so cute. He was a pound when I got him. And you know how the prices of houses have really gone up through the roof. Well, same for dogs. I paid $2,000 for this little. He's not even a purebred, he's a goddamn mix. I paid, so that's $2,000 a pound for this little piece of meat. And um, for those of you keeping score, that's the same price as black truffles. Yeah, which I can't afford. But uh, now he's eight pounds, so now he's the price of Wagyu beef, which is great uh, because I've never had Wagyu. And so I remind him of that every time I catch him chewing my shoes. <laughs> Who looks delicious today? Aren't you tasty looking? Yeah. But you know, it's like, ah, man, it's hard not to miss the things that we had from before the pandemic, right? You know, like mild sexual harassment. I do. I miss it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had this really weird thing happen to me uh, the summer before the pandemic that I was in Toronto and I was walking around downtown looking at my cell phone and not paying attention and um, I stepped on a subway grate and my skirt blew up over my head and there were two guys right behind me and do you know what they said to me? Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. No. No. What do I gotta do to get some attention? I've been single a long time. I stood on that grate for 10 minutes. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. See something, say something. That's the rule, isn't it? It's not fair. Man, I have a hard time meeting guys. I don't need this news. No, I do. It's terrible. I like, I, I'm super tall, you know, and it's just, it's hard for me to meet guys. Yeah, I'm taller than 85% of men on earth. That's how long I've been single. I Googled it. I have a hat that says you must be this tall to ride this ride. It's not working for me. I have to wear it around my neck now. It's bad. Yeah, plus I gotta compete against these short girls now who wear these six inch platform heels perpetrating a fraud and playing outside their height bracket to steal tall men from me. That's not fucking fair. I don't need that. No. No, seriously, and now I have to keep my eye out for the transgender community because I can't compete against somebody who has a dick, a big rack, and fierce contouring. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is hard out here for a bitch. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it's terrible. I'm doing everything, I was doing everything I could to meet someone. I started watching Man Tracker. <laughs> yeah, not what I thought it was gonna be, no. And I don't have a horse, so it wasn't working at all. <laughs> I was using all those dating apps, you know, where you swipe, you know, swipe left and right like you're looking for a shirt on the racket winners, you know, it was just like, yeah, it was just like, right swipe, coffee date, butt sex. It was just, it's too easy. It's too casual, I can't do that. I can't do that. I hate coffee dates. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, but my problem is I really, I want to meet someone my own age to have a relationship with. I, uh, I'm lucky I look a bit younger than I do. I miss young guys hitting on me. Oh my God, it was so fun. Because they would think that they were hitting on a cougar, but actually they were hitting on a saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. And if I told them my actual age, they get this crazy look on their face like they wanted to finish a secret mission in Grand Theft Auto that night. So, 
Yeah, I, I, so I was like, I was getting ready to lie about my age, for sure. Because like, I was young enough, I was young enough to do Jaeger bombs all night. Sure, of course. But I'm old enough I need a week to recover. I'm, I'm young enough to sext with guys, but I'm old enough I need reading glasses to do it. <laughs> I'm young enough to pick up a guy and have a one night stand, but I'm old enough that I no longer need birth control. <laughs> oh yeah, nothing but dust in there. It's, oh, it's like Mars. It's red and angry. <laughs> Scientists think it might have supported life at one point. And Matt Damon would never get out alive. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Heather Hurst.